Here's the question that I ended the previous part of the video lecture with, and let's have a look at the answer. So the definition of isolated is that there are no external interactions, and we know that whenever there are no external interactions, the system's momentum doesn't change. But this scallop speeds up, and so its velocity changes, and therefore its momentum changes, and so this system is not isolated. When we choose the system to be both carts, we've already seen that, since it's an isolated system, it's a lot like the system of houses with cats with the fence around it, because there's no input or output. And so, the only possibility for change is creation and destruction. But experimentally, we've seen this relationship with the changes in momentums of the carts. And just rearranging it, you see that the sum of the changes of momentums of the carts is zero. Or in other words, the system momentum remains unchanged during the collision. Well, that's suggesting that creation and destruction simply don't happen. So it's like not only our houses are inside fences, but we've got neutered immortal cats. That's how our collision is working for momentum. Now just realize that the momentums of the individual carts are able to change. If you want to continue the analogy with the cats, it's like the cats can't leave the two houses, they can't leave the system, but they are able to pass from one house to the other. By definition, when a system is isolated, there's no input or output of momentum. We've also seen for the cart collisions we've been looking at that the momentum is conserved. It can't be destroyed or created. How general is that? All of the cart collisions we've looked at have been with the magnetic interactions where the carts don't touch. What if we try a different interaction? Here are the two carts and they're going to collide with their Velcro ends. The collision is still isolated. There's very little friction with the track. But what happens? Well, we can look again at the graph of Vx versus t. And you can see that the change in the velocity of one of the carts is pretty much twice as big as the change of the velocity of the other cart. And this was, again, a single cart and a double cart colliding. And so we have exactly the same relationship we saw when we used the magnetic interactions. And that's the one that we used at the beginning of lecture 4 to derive that the momentum is conserved, that all that is happening here is that momentum is being exchanged between the carts. So momentum seems to be conserved for all sorts of collisions between our carts. What about other objects? Is this general or just specific to our carts? Well, we can look at this collision between cars. And what I've now plotted, I'm not looking at the Vx versus T graph. I'm doing a more direct test by actually, test, by actually calculating the momentums of the two cars and calculating the total momentum. And you can see that the total momentum, which is in yellow on the graph, is roughly constant through the collision. So again, the momentum seems to be conserved in this collision between these two cars. Well, we can keep testing it for all sorts of other objects, and we have. And what we see is that whenever our system is isolated, in other words, whenever external interactions are negligible, the system's momentum is conserved. Furthermore, you can always just redefine your system so that it isn't isolated, and you remove some part that you used to consider part of your system. But now you know that any output or input is just because of exchange with that object. And so we see that for non-isolated systems, the momentum only changes by coming in or out of the system. It's again not created or destroyed. And so we can state a very general law that momentum can be transferred from one object to another, but it can never be created or destroyed. This is the law of conservation of momentum. It's incredibly well verified by huge numbers of experiments in all sorts of different situations. We believe it to be universal. 
When a system isn't isolated, its momentum can change. Only by input and output, it's exchanging momentum with the environment. No momentum is being created or destroyed. We call the change in momentum of the system the impulse, which we use a capital J to represent. And for now, we're not going to be able to say much more about the impulse, except that we know that it must result by the external interactions. Once we've actually talked more later in the course about interactions themselves, we'll be able to come back to impulse and say quite a bit more about it. There are several ideas here that students often get quite mixed up about, and so let's check that you're following. So I just showed you this data on the collision between these two cars, and I want you to tell me whether this collision is isolated, at least approximately isolated. So as usual, if you're doing this through Moodle, when you click to the next page, it'll ask you this question. Otherwise, I think you should still try and answer this question for yourself before going on to the next part.